Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's Plasma. We're going to talk about TacView, and I'll take you through the basics and show you a fight breakdown as well. First off, if you have TacView installed, you can get it for free from tacview.net. Download it and install it when your DCS is not running, and it will automatically create a folder called TacView and integrate itself into DCS. Now, the folder for TacView will be located inside of the Documents folder, and when you fly single player and some multiplayer missions, a TacView file will be saved inside of Documents. Tack view. So let's go inside here and we can see a number of TAC view files that have been saved. So I'm going to open up this one here from one of the matches that we've had and we'll be watching Aaron. Now, what first thing that we'll see on the screen is the fact that we've got the map that has loaded up. By holding the control button and clicking on the center of the bullseye with the right and left mouse button, I've kind of centered on it. But along the bottom, I have different views as well. So you have a global view, which automatically centers it airplane view or pilot cockpit view. Now, that doesn't do much yet, but we'll get to that in just a second. Along the bottom, we have our timeline, which we can click and drag, and this will move the time forwards. Now, the aircraft we're looking for is Aaron here, and uh, let's find her Aaron. There's Yusuf, there's Saffron, there's Aaron, so I'm going to double click on Aaron. Now, Aaron is selected. But we'll stick to Aaron here and we'll fast forward to some action here as we go through a fight. This was a fight against uh, Phoenix Task Force, one of the excellent competitive teams out there. And we are in the airplane view, which you can see on the bottom here, which means that if I have Aaron selected, I can click anywhere near him holding my left mouse button and pan around in 3D all the way around him. If I want to snap for a top-down view, I click on the world and I get a top-down map view where if you hold down the mouse button and drag, it'll just simply move the screen left or right. But what we're looking for here is a fight between Aaron and enemy one here. So I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. And here we have Aaron. And I can either hit play to play this in real time. I can accelerate or slow down or I can drag the little time bar at the bottom here to move things forwards. So we can see that an AIM-9 was fired at Aaron and Aaron fired back an ET. So let's go into 3D view. And in 3D view, we can see that Aaron not only fired an ET, but also an SD-10 missile. Now, if we want, if this is getting too busy, we can click on the labels on the bottom here. There's a little display object IDs, we click on that, and we've cleared out the labels. And if we want to find out what something is, we can just hover our mouse over it. Now we can see that the first missile that Aaron fired goes for flares. Aaron deploys flares and the enemy's AIM-9 misses him. But Aaron's SD-10 missile, which is a FOX-3 and impervious to flares, splashes his target. Now we're going to keep looking at Aaron here as uh, we watch his engagement with the other hostile, which is enemy two up here. Now, although this view is nice, I personally like to click on the wrench and screwdriver up top into the settings and change my terrain mode into high contrast. And this makes things pop out a bit more in the high contrast mode. Let's keep fast forwarding through and watch one missile gets fired onto Seb, and Seb may get splashed here. Aaron fires an ET, which goes for the one flare that's in the air. And now Aaron is looking for his enemy, but the enemy has splashed Seb and is continuing to the east. Here Aaron reacquires, and we can see the beam from his nose, showing that his radar is pointing at the enemy aircraft. I'm holding down the mouse wheel and just moving my mouse to the right, which is slowly moving the timeline forwards. Aaron loses track, and so does the enemy aircraft. They kind of fly by each other without seeing the other aircraft. Aaron's in the valley. The enemy aircraft is looking for him. And right here, Aaron realizes the enemy is climbing, so he starts to turn in to up at the top of 22,000 feet. The altitude here is the first two digits. And he starts diving down on Aaron. 
fires an AIM-120, and this is actually something else we can do here. We can actually see the angles of missiles, so we can see how Aaron notched it. So first we hold down the control button and click on Aaron with the left mouse. Then we keep holding the control button and right click on the missile. And what we're looking for is range relative bearing combat 3D. And this shows that the enemy missile, which is an AIM-120, is 116 degrees off of Aaron. If Aaron hits 90 degrees or uses terrain, the missile will lose track. So at the last second, Aaron turns through and the missile loses track of him right here and he saves his life, basically. But that's not all. There's a second missile on its way towards Aaron. Aaron is maneuvering. The missile's turning in on him. And for whatever reason, the missile goes stupid, and Aaron survives that as well. We can watch him come around. There's an AIM-9, which is a FOX-2 from the F-16. Aaron deploys flares. Fires an R-73. And if we double click on Aaron as our selected aircraft and click on the pilot view, we can actually see his cockpit view, including all of the indicators. So his thrust was at 73% when he fired that missile and deployed the flares. That's what probably saved him because if you're an afterburner, you will experience problems. Now here, as soon as Aaron realizes that he's no longer in danger, he goes back to 100% thrust and now he can maneuver towards the enemy aircraft. So he'll go back into 3D view. Missile launch. The enemy F-16 deploys flares. And if you find these trails annoying, all you have to do is just go to the bottom of the screen and use the dragging, miss dragging symbol here to just d remove the trails. You can either make them super long or you can make them super short. And you can unselect other things along the bottom to hide the other information. But let's watch this out. So there's a missile from Aaron, R-73. The F-16 deploy f deploys flares. Missile goes stupid. Aaron is keeping an eye on the F-16. The F-16 goes low. Missile comes off the rail, straight down. The F-16 is out of flares, and this is Aaron's last missile. And there's a splash. So that was a quick breakdown of the fight. The most important thing to really look for here is right here in the notch, when Aaron hits 90 degrees and prevents the missile from basically tracking him, making the missile go stupid, as well as using terrain to mask himself from the missile and also using the notch here to avoid the missile impact. In addition, the other really important piece is right here when the enemy fires their AIM-9. If we go into Aaron's cockpit view, we can see that he instantly cuts his throttle. So he's at 99% throttle here. And as soon as he sees the launch, he cuts his throttle down to 76% and deploys his flares. This way his engine's not too hot and there's less of a chance that the FOX-2 missile will track him. And similarly, we can double click on the F-16 that was involved, but because we don't have the data from inside of his plane, this is just him being observed, we don't have his throttle settings. But if the TACV recorded the data for you, you'll have that data there. So there you have it, quick breakdown of a fight. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Leave questions about TACV in the comments below and uh, get TACV from TACV.net. This was Plasma, and I'll see you in the next video.